Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Janak Patel, MD physician. I am not a cardiologist, but still, I am a student at present. I am learning many things. So, whatever I have learned, I would like to share with you. So, today we will be talking about one of the very useful topics. That is how you identify that this rhythm strip shows the ventricular rhythm or ventricular pattern. So we'll try to make it as simple as possible. So it will be very useful to you. So if you understand very well, you will remember. And if you remember, you will try to recognize. And you will know what you are looking for. So we we'll try to make it as simple as possible. So today we'll be talking about ventricular rhythm. Have a look at more and more number of ECG and listen to more and more for people. So you'll know more and you will be able to recognize very easily whether this is a ventricular rhythm or it is a normal sinus rhythm. We also call it a broad QRS or we call a wide QRS. Now you can see here in this particular ECG all these complexes are identical. This is different. So something is abnormal here. So if you recognize what this abnormality is, you will be able to pick up many many arrhythmias. So always make an attempt to identify a abnormal complex and it belongs to which rhythm whether it is normal sinus rhythm or it is a atrial or it is a nodal or it is a ventricular. So we will be talking in detail today regarding a ventricular rhythm. Ventricular arrhythmias will be talking about introductory part of that. So what is ventricular rhythm? Meaning of ventricular rhythm is when the origin of a pacemaker is from a ventricle and it produces a QRS complex. Then we call that rhythm is ventricular. Classical example, very simple example, ventricular premature beat or we call premature ventricular contraction. So that we call is a ventricular rhythm. This is a broad QRS complex. This is QRS and see that P wave. P wave is in opposite direction. Before this QRS complex, there is no P wave. And if you look at this RR interval and look at this RR interval, this is less than this RR. So this has come early. This bit should have come here, somewhere here. So it has come early. So this becomes a premature and it has given rise to ventricular contraction. So premature ventricular contraction or it is a premature arising from ventricle. So ventricular premature beat. So this is how we try to recognize. Right. Now what are the characteristics? One, P wave is absent before QRS complex. So there is no P wave before QRS complex. Second characteristic, QRS complex is broad. At least minimum more than 0.12 second means 3 small square. And QRS complex and T wave are in opposite direction. We call this quadrant. Typical, very, very typical. It has come early, so premature. And there is a compensatory pause. After this, look at this RR interval. It is big. This we call is a compensatory pause. And if you calculate the interval, this will be nearly exactly double. So we call that as this is a full compensatory pause. So if all these five criteria are fulfilled, we'll call this as a ventricular rhythm. And as this is a single, we'll call as single ventricular premature beat. Now Again, have a look at this 
and I'm showing you this second. Again, this is a ventricular beat. This is ventricular beat. You can see there is a wide QRS complex, no P wave before QRS. And if you look at the QRS complex and T wave, they are in opposite direction. We call this quarter. So this is a ventricular beat. But this is not premature because if you look at this RR interval, and then there is a very big pause. If you look here, there is a big pause. And during this period, there is no P wave at all, no QRS complex at all. So there is a very big pause. So what has happened here? SA node has fired. Impulse has traveled to bundle of his and ventricles. So you got a QRS complex. Now here there is no SA node working. So there is a big pause here. We can call that as a sinus pause. You can call as a sinus arrest. You can even call this as a sinoatrial block. Now after this particular period, you can see this is a quite long period. Now, as there was sinus node was not firing or sinus node does not activate AV node. Now, ventricle has taken over and ventricle has fired. So, ventricle focus has fired a bit. We call escape bit. So, this is called as an escape bit. This is not called ventricular premature bit. So, understand the difference between ventricular escape bit and ventricular premature bit. Ventricular premature beat is a premature, no P wave before QRS complex, QRS complex is broad, QRS complex and T wave in a discordant or we call in an opposite direction and there is a full compensatory pause. While in a ventricular escape beat, it is always after a pause and previous beat is a normal beat and then after that ventricular escape beat, you can have a pause or you may not have a pause. And again, you can see that after a pause, you got a normal sinus beat. So this is a ventricular escape beat. So ventricular escape beat, what it must occur at the end of the pause. This is a pause and at the end of the pause, you got that. It is a wide QRS complex. There is no P wave. This is in opposite direction and it is followed by a compensatory pause. So this is a characteristic of a ventricular escape beat. So there is a difference between this and ventricular premature beat. Ventricular escape beat is not dangerous one, but ventricular premature beat can become dangerous because it comes in a repolarization of a previous beat. So again, you can have a look here. Normal sinus beat, normal sinus beat. This is a P wave, normal sinus beat. And then SA node is not fired. So there is no, this beat was supposed to come here. So this is almost we can call that as a sinus arrest. And after that, big pause. Now ventricle has fired. So this is ventricle has escaped from the previous beat. And so you've got a ventricular escape beat. It is identical like a ventricular premature beat, but it has come after a pause. That's why it is called as a ventricular escape beat. And then you can look that. Look at this RR interval and this RR interval. There may be compensatory pause, there may not be. And now this is again a normal sinus beat. So this is one single ventricular escape beat. Yes, you will have no pulse during this period. Pulse will not be there. But this will be recorded in an ECG. So do look at this particular. These are less lethal. There is something called as a ventricular parasystole. The meaning of parasystole means there is no fixed couple premature ventricular contraction. Where interectopic interval, that is timing between the PVC, are some multiple. Means if you look at this and this, these are some multiple. This RR interval and this RR interval is constant. So it is a sum multiple. So this is a parasystole and these are of two different focus. This is a different focus. This is a different focus. And now if you see here, after this, this bit was supposed to come here, but there is a bit from the atrium or bit from the sinus node and that ventricular premature bit and that bit has fused together. 
so this is called as a fusion bit but it is also called as a dressler bit so whenever you get a fusion bit it is a fusion of ventricular premature bit and a sinus bit so this is a fusion bit again you can see that this is identical this rr interval is constant and again again if you look at this interval this is also constant so this is again a fusion bit so these are fusion bits and this can happen in a pa ventricular parasystole so fusion bits are there which have got pvc we have a uniform morphology unless there is a fusion bit so these are fusion bits the shape of that qrs complex is different from this focus so ventricular premature bit is united with a sinus bit that we call as a fusion bit now we are going to talk about what are the different varieties which can be seen in an ecg which will show you a broad qrs complex we are going to talk only of broad qrs complex at present so what is broad qrs complex broad qrs complex means if qrs complex is more than 0.12 second we'll call that's a broad or more than 3 small square so if you look here this is more than 3 small square this is a broad qrs complex well this is not broad this is less than 0.1 so this is a normal qrs complex or we call it a narrow qrs complex so we are looking at only that so any time if you get get this type of qrs complex which is broad enough and it is more than 0.12 second or we call more than 3 small square this you will see in rbbb lbbb wpw syndrome hyperkalemia if there is an intraventricular conduction defect or we use a word aberrant conduction in a case of a complete heart block with a idioventricular rhythm this is a typical of complete heart block and where this is from ventricle so that we call as a idioventricular rhythm and idioventricular rhythm is also called as a escape rhythm because it is escaping from the control from higher center so that is called idioventricular rhythm and if the depending upon the rate normal rate in a idioventricular rhythm is between 20 to 40 per minute and if it is more than 40 but less than 100 we call that as accelerated idioventricular rhythm if there is one single bit all other qrs complex are narrow and one single bit is showing you this pattern we'll call that as ventricular bit and if it is premature then we call is a ventricular premature bit or we call is a premature ventricular contraction but if it comes after a long pause which is probably because of sinus pause we call is a sinus arrest or sinus pause or sometime even after sinoatrial block that we call is a ventricular escape bit and if there is a run of ventricular bit run of ventricular bit we'll show you all those ecg all are wide all are identical rr interval is constant and the rate is more than 100 then we'll call that as a ventricular tachycardia and whenever a person has got a ventricular tachycardia invariably person has got av dissociation because the ventricle is beating at its own rate atrium is controlled by either atrial focus or by sinus node sa node and that will give rise to independent working of a p wave and independent working of a qrs complex that we call is a av dissociation and if the rate is very very fast more than 300 we call that as a ventricular flutter there is an another variety which will also have a broad qrs complex is brugada syndrome in a brugada syndrome qrs complex is little wide and in a, even in a pace rhythm whenever the person is on a pacemaker and if you take a rhythm strip on a pace rhythm it is always and if there is a ventricular pacing which is being done it will show you a broad qrs complex so these are all the conditions which will show you a broad qrs complex yes in a incomplete right bundle branch block and incomplete left bundle branch block qrs complex is not more than 0.12 second but it is around 0.1 second and all the characteristic of a right bundle branch block and left bundle branch block is met with but the qrs complex is less than 0.12 it is close to 0.1 second we call that as a incomplete right bundle branch block or incomplete left bundle branch block while in lgl the qrs complex is normal but 
PR interval is short. That we call as a LGL syndrome. So this tree does not come in a wide QRS complex or we call it a broad QRS complex. So now we'll be showing you all those different patterns. You must be able to differentiate all this from, these are we call as a ventricular rhythm, idioventricular rhythm or escape beat, accelerated ventricular premature beat, VT, ventricular flutter. These are ventricular complexes. So this is ventricular rhythm. And if you are getting a ventricular complex in presence of a complete heavy block, we call as a complete heart block or we call third degree AV block. So this will be in another variety. While all these are not because of ventricular rhythm, RBBB, LBBB, WPW, hyperkalemia, aberrant conduction, Brugada syndrome, pace rhythm, they are not because of ventricular rhythm. Yes, pace rhythm is because of pacemaker which is firing into ventricle, it produces a ventricular rhythm. But these are classical ventricular rhythm. This will be talking in detail. But I am showing you the difference. What is the difference? Now, if you look in a complete right bundle branch block, what is the characteristic? In lead 1, you will have a R wave, a deep S wave, a broad and deep S wave, and also in V6, V5, V6, means lead 1, AVL, V5, V6, you will have a deep S wave. R wave followed by a deep and broad S wave. And in V1, you will have R, S, R dash pattern. By and large, the second R is taller than the first R. And in AVR, you will get a terminal R wave which is taller and broad. This is characteristic of a right bundle plant block. And all QRS complex are preceded by P wave. Remember this. If you get a broad QRS complex and there is no P wave before, it cannot be RBBB or LBBB. Yes, like a ventricular complex, you will have a QRS complex and T wave will be in opposite direction. That will be discordant. So, if again I am repeating, if you get a broad QRS complex, which is showing you RS, R dash pattern, preceded by P wave and T wave in an opposite direction. In the same lead, all QRS complex are identical. Means, suppose if I am looking at the V1 and there are five complexes, all five complexes are identical and it shows you this characteristic. And in lead 1, AVL and V5, V6, you got a deep S wave, broad S wave. And in AVR, you get a terminal R wave which is taller and broad. You will label that as complete right bundle branch block. Left bundle branch block, opposite of that. In lead 1, AVL and V5 and V6, you have got a RS, R dash pattern. R, S, R dash pattern. In which, usually, the first R wave is little taller than the second R wave. And T wave is in opposite direction. All QRS complex are preceded by P wave. While in V1, you will have a small R wave followed by a deep S wave. So, V1, V2 will show you a deep S wave and even in AVR, you will get a deep S wave. This is characteristic of a complete right left bundle branch block. In a WPW syndrome, you will have a short PR interval followed by a wide QRS complex and the, during a first ascending part of the R wave, there is a notch we call as a delta wave on the early upstroke. It is a slurred upstroke we call as a delta wave. This particular is slurred. That is we call as a delta wave. And QRS complex is more than 0.1 second. So this is characteristic of a WPW syndrome, Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. This is because of accessory bundle of Kent and it will give rise to re-entry tachycardias. We call as a AVRT, atrioventricular re-entry tachycardia, which can be orthodromic or antidromic. Antidromic will be usually with a broad QRS complex tachyarrhythmias, while orthodromic will be usually narrow complex QRS tachycardias. So remember that particular thing. So this is the characteristic of a WPW. While in LGL or we call Lawn Genoth Levine syndrome, this QRS complex is normal or we call it a narrow, is less than 0.1 second. You will have a short PR interval with a narrow QRS complex. 
so that is LGL syndrome. Now in a hyperkalemia, as the potassium becomes more and more, the T wave is taller, it is picked, this interval is narrow, so you got a narrow base, pick T wave, because these two are identical, so it is symmetrical and it is taller than half of R wave. This is characteristic of a hyperkalemia. Now, as the hyperkalemia increases, P wave becomes flatter, PR interval is prolonged and P wave will disappear and QRS complex will become wider. So, once the QRS complex starts becoming wider, P wave starts becoming flatter, PR interval is prolonged, there is a loss of P wave. Now, you can see that this is a broad QRS complex. Now, this is a characteristic of a hyperkalemia. So, in a hyperkalemia, you get a broad QRS complex. Almost there is a loss of P wave. If there is a loss of P wave, we can't calculate the PR interval. If P wave is flat, PR interval is prolonged. T wave is taller. And as it becomes further, P wave has disappeared. The QRS complex, which is wide, broad, it merges with the T wave. So, this looks like a sine wave. So, this is called sine wave. This is characteristic, classical characteristic of a hyperkalemia. And the tall T wave has got a characteristic, it is thick, narrow base, symmetrical and taller. All four characteristics are met with, we call that as a hyperkalemia, classical hyperkalemia. So, broad QRS complex with a tall T wave, absence of P wave, do suspect hyperkalemia. Three things, again I am repeating. Absence of P wave, broad QRS complex, tall T wave, which is a peak T wave, narrow base, we call symmetrical and tall hyperkalemia. Now you can look here. This is a normal ventricular, normal sinus bit, P wave, normal QRS complex. You have got a P wave, but following that, it is not normal, it is not narrow, it is broad. Now, this P wave has come little early. If you calculate this RR interval or if you look at this PP interval, this P wave, if you look this, this is almost more than four small, four big square. One, two, three, almost close to four. So, this should have come somewhere here. Instead of that, it has come early. This P wave and this P wave is abnormal. This is abnormal. So, this is a premature and abnormal. So, it has come from the atrial focus. So, premature atrial contraction. But if you look at the QRS complex, now QRS complex is broad. It is like a ventricular premature beat. So, QRS complex is broad and T wave is in opposite direction. But this broad QRS complex is preceded by P wave. So, this is not ventricular complex. So, difference between a ventricular complex and Supraventricular complex, supraventricular complex will be preceded by P wave. So, this is preceded by P wave, it is premature. But QRS complex is wide, so this is premature atrial contraction followed by what we call as aberrant conduction and this is because of RBBB. So, because of an RBBB pattern, this is an aberrant conduction which has taken place. You can see again here, this is premature and this is an aberrant conduction. So, this is a normal premature beat, atrial premature beat, but with an aberrant conduction. So, this can be mistaken very commonly as a ventricular premature beat. So, again, the difference between the two is presence of this P wave and P wave is always of abnormal shape than previous sinus beat. So, if you look at this, look at this, this is abnormal. Look at this P wave and look at this, abnormal. So, this is abnormal. P wave is preceding QRS complex. So, then this becomes a atrial premature beat with aberrant conduction. Okay, clear? Right. So, premature beat with aberrant conduction. Now, this is an another variety you should pay attention properly. We have already done in a blocks, but I am repeating again. Now, if you look at the P wave, P wave rate is faster than RR rate. P to P is regular, but PP interval is faster than RR. 
So P wave is contracting independently. QRS complex is coming independently. So there is an AV dissociation. Now if you look at the QRS complex, it is not broad. So if the focus is close to bundle of his, after from that focus, it is activating the ventricle, but by a normal pathway, bundle of his, then two bundles. So this is giving rise to a normal QRS complex, but it is coming and activating the ventricle from there. So this is a normal focus, which is close to bundle of his, but it is from ventricle. So this P wave is independent. This QRS complex is independent. This is coming from supraventricular focus that is from SA node. So this is a normal sinus activation. But because there is an AV node which is completely blocked, this impulse cannot activate this cycle. But from the focus which is below the AV node, that is activating and that is producing this narrow QRS complex. So this is a complete heart block or we call it a third degree AV block but producing a narrow complex. So sometimes this is very, very tricky to identify a complete heart block. How you will identify? That PP interval is less than RR interval. So atrial rate is faster than ventricular rate. Even if the QRS complex is narrow, this is complete heart block. But if the focus is after bundle of his, once this is divided, then it is coming from ventricular, so it will be a broad QRS, not preceded by P wave, because here the P wave is independent. RR interval will be idioventricular rhythm rate, means between 20 to 40 per minute, but the atrial rate will be at the sinus rate. So, PV, PP interval will be between 60 to 100 per minute, and this will be between 20 to 40 per minute. Because the focus is somewhere from the ventricle or after the bundle of his, then this will be a broad QRS complex. So this will be complete heart block. What this phenomena is called as complete heart block with AV dissociation. Atrium and ventricle are contracting independently. Here what has happened, the atrial rate is faster than ventricular rate. And in case of a ventricular tachycardia, the ventricular rate will be faster than the atrial rate. That is a part of a AV dissociation. So here it is a narrow QRS complex, here it is a broad QRS complex. Both are complete heart block. In this, the focus is close to bundle of his after the AV node, focus is close to bundle of his. While here, the focus, ventricular focus is after the bifurcation of bundle of his into two bundles. So that particular will produce a broad QRS complex in complete AV block or we call it a third degree AV block. Now here if you look at all QRS complex are broad, RR interval is constant so this is regular, there is no P wave preceding this. So these are all ventricular complex and if you look at this T wave, it is in opposite direction. So the rate is between 20 to 40 per minute, so this is ventricular rhythm rate, what we call is a idioventricular rhythm rate, rate wise idioventricular rhythm, QRS complex wise ventricular complex. If this rate becomes more than 40 but less than 100, then we call that accelerated idioventricular rhythm and if the rate becomes more than 100, then we will call it a ventricular tachycardia. This accelerated is also sometimes given a name, slow VT because it is not more than 100 but less than 100, so it is called slow ventricular tachycardia. But ideal word will be accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Accelerated means more than 40, but less than 100. So this is typical of ventricular and all QRS complex are identical and RR interval is constant. So this becomes idioventricular rhythm. Or you can also use a word, idioventricular escape rhythm. Now if you look here, there is a single beat which is abnormal. So this is a premature beat because if this is a RR interval, this has come little early, this would have come somewhere here, P wave should have come here. But instead of this has come early, it is preceded by a P wave. So this is a premature ventricular complex, clear? Broad QRS, P wave in opposite direction. 
and look at this r this r to this r it is prolonged it is long compensatory pause and this is a full compensatory pause so that's why this is a classical single as it is a single it is always a monophasic or we call it a single focus ventricular premature beat now if you look at this these are all identical we have discussed just before these are all identical they are broad t wave in opposite direction it is not preceded by p wave you can see this is not preceded by p wave at all so this is idioventricular rhythm if you see at this rate this is less than 40 and this is more than 40 so this is idioventricular rhythm this is idioventricular rhythm with accelerated rate so accelerated idioventricular rhythm or we can call this also as a slow vt and if you look at this all qrs complex are identical they are broad t wave in opposite direction not preceded by p wave and if you look at the rate it is more than 100 so ventricular tachycardia ventricular premature beat idioventricular rhythm accelerated idioventricular rhythm and ventricular tachycardia all these are ventricular rhythm now these are all the terminology which will be used very frequently now whatever we show you we have already explained you ventricular premature beat we have explained you idioventricular rhythm now depending upon the different characteristic of a ventricular complexes what we call as a ventricular premature beats will be using a word different words as far as a ventricular premature beat is concerned and whenever more than 3 ventricular premature beat comes in succession and all are identical and if it comes for a longer period more than 30 second we call sustain but if it is less than 30 second we call non sustain and depending upon the characteristic of the focus we call monomorphic polymorphic we use monophasic polyphasic etc different terms we will be using further and if it is more than 30 seconds then we use a monomorphic sustain vt polymorphic sustain vt etc now there is an another variety what we call is a bundle branch block reentry tachycardias so if there is a reentry tachycardias which is occurring in a ventricle and it is from the ventricular focus and it is having a bundle branch block pattern we'll use the word bundle branch block reentry tachycardias and if there are two different focus and having a alternate beat which are coming from a two different focus and having a tachycardia we'll use the word bidirectional vt if vt is polymorphic and if it is coming after a prolonged qt interval qrs complex then that is we call as torsor de pointis if the rate of ventricular tachycardia is more than 300 we use the word ventricular flutter and if qrs complex are bizarre you cannot identify the qrs complex at all where is a q wave where is a r wave where is a t wave and rate you cannot calculate we usually use the word ventricular fibrillation here we use the two word coarse and fine don't try to use those words and when you start getting a straight line with almost not detectable any electrical activity we call ventricular arrest ventricular systole ventricular stand still etc these are the words and if there are wide qrs complex and before a wide qrs complex there is a pacemaker spike and then depending upon the rate the words are utilized this will be will be calling as pacemaker complexes and all pacemaker complexes will be preceded by pacemaker spike and it will be a ventricular pacing this we call as a ventricular pacemaker complexes so these are all the different words this we have already explained you now for this ventricular premature beat these are the common two words which we utilize premature ventricular contraction we call pvc or we call ventricular premature beat so pvc or ventricular premature beat you also call is extra systole or ectopic beat or ventricular premature depolarization but usually these are the two common words which are being utilized vp beat or pvc 
depending upon whatever you want to use. If you come across the etiology of all ventricular arrhythmias together, the most common cause is acute MI or because of the chronic ischemic heart disease. It is also very, very common with a heart failure. And particularly if a person has got congestive heart failure and which damages myocardium. Certain congenital heart disease will also have a premature complexes, some neurological disorders, particularly anxiety, structural heart disease, particularly where you get uh, cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy. In infants, we call sudden infant death syndrome. These are all because of channelopathy. We'll be just mentioning some of those channelopathy. Electrolyte imbalance, particularly potassium, hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, magnesium, more frequently hypomagnesemia. There is one condition we call the Brugada syndrome. The spelling is little wrong here. D is replaced by C. Sorry, it is Brugada. So do read this as a D. Then there is another condition which can be congenital or acquired. We call long QT and short QT. This can also end up with a VTVF. Brugada can also end up with VTVF. The sudden the infant death syndrome are also sudden appearance of VTVF. So these are all genetics, genetic disorders. Now when we can't identify any particular etiology, we call it idiopathic. So idiopathic is a very big group. Usually they are non-pathogen. There is one more condition. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> we call it a catecholaminergic, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Short form we call CPVT, catecholamine, polymorphic, ventricular tachycardia. There is a sudden release of a catecholamine which triggers off ventricular tachycardia and in that ventricular tachycardia we have got a more than one focus. So we call polymorphic. We have got more than two shapes in a ventricular tachycardia. We call polymorphic ventricular tachycardia and this can produce irregular rhythm because polymorphic ventricular tachycardia is irregular. Even in torsor appointees also, it is irregular. So all this condition can produce a ventricular rhythm disturbances. Certain cardiomyopathy, particularly dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and there is one more variety we call ARVD, that is arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. So we call that as a ARVC, and we use arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, then it is called ARVD. Some people use the word right ventricular arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, whatever way, this is the common, ARVD is the common term which is being utilized. These are all the conditions which can give rise to what we call as a ventricular dysrhythmia or arrhythmias. Ventricular premature beats can be also very common in person who is on cyclical antidepressants, caffeine, who is a chronic alcoholic, nicotine, even smoking, Acidosis, acute MI we have already mentioned, severe stress, electrolyte imbalance, structural heart disease, hypoxia, etc. And don't forget idiopathy. So now we are showing you some of the ventricular complexes. We have already shown you this. No P wave, broad QRS complex, T wave in opposite direction. This has come early. See this RR interval, see this RR interval. This is premature, followed by a compensatory pulse, ventricular premature beat or premature ventricular contraction. So all characteristics met with. Single, single. So it is monophos monophasic or we call it a unifocal. Clear? And full compensatory pulse, full compensatory pulse. We already told you this. These are the few words which are pulse will not be palpable. It is will be a missed beat. But during this, apex will be there. So you will get apex pulse deficit. This I have already discussed before. So I am not repeating. But I put this slide because you have to differentiate that from atrial premature beat or premature atrial contraction. And we have discussed in a extra systoles. We have also discussed in a premature beats. We have discussed this particular part. So I am not repeating again. Now you can see here, normal 
sinus bed, normal sinus bed, normal sinus bed. Then there is a big pause. The second beat would have come here. The third beat would have come here. Now there is a big pause. So there is a something we call as a sinus arrest or sinus pause. And then there is ventricle has taken over. Ventricle focus has given rise to a beat. So this is a ventricular premature beat. But this is not premature. This has come after a big pause. That's why this is called ventricular escape beat. So this is a ventricular escape beat. Clear? And then it is followed by a pause. Again, normal sinus beats. This is typical ventricular escape beat. Do not mistake it that this is a premature beat. These are usually non-pathogenic. Usually non-pathogenic. So regarding a compensatory pause, we already mentioned in a premature atrial contraction, there will be incomplete pause or we call incomplete compensatory pause. While in a ventricular premature beat, it is always a full compensatory pause. This I have already shown you before. These are same shape. So this is unifocal ventricular premature beat. Unifocal. Now what are the different words which are utilized? Depending upon the number of bits, we use a single. If it is more than one, we usually call multiple. If it is in a coming in alternate, normal sinus beat followed by ventricular premature beat, normal sinus beat followed by ventricular premature beat, we use a term bigemini. If every third beat is ventricular premature beat, trigemini. Fourth beat is ventricular premature beat, quadrigemini or we call tetragemini. And if fifth beat, pentagemini. Sixth beat, hexa. Seventh, septa. Eight, octa. Nine, nano. And ten, deca. These are the terms which are being utilized. If two beats are coming together, Normal sinus beat followed by two ventricular beats, identical ventricular beats and coming in succession. So that we call as a couplets. If three beats are coming in succession, we call triplets. If between the two sinus beats, if you get a ventricular premature beat and there is no compensatory pause, we call interpolated ventricular premature beat. If you got all premature bits, ventricular premature bits are of the same shape and they are coming from single focus, we call unifocal or we use the word monomorphic. But if they are coming from two different focus or more than two different focus, we call multifocal or we use the word polymorphic. If ventricular premature bit is coming on T wave of previous QRS complex, we call R on T phenomena. And whenever you get a R on T phenomena, it is a dangerous one. Always think of that. So try to identify this. Person can suddenly develop ventricular tachycardia. And we already mentioned idioventricular rhythm. I have already explained. And if the rate is between 20 to 40, we use the word idioventricular rhythm. All QRS complex are broad. All QRS complex are not preceded by P wave. QRS complex and T wave is in opposite direction or we call this quadrant. And rate is between 20 to 40 per minute, idioventricular rhythm. If rate is more than 40 but less than 100, accelerated idioventricular rhythm or we call slow VT. And if the rate is more than 100, we call VT. In VT, you will not see P wave usually. But if you see a P wave, the P wave rate will be less than RR rate. We call AV dissociation. And if the ventricular rate is more than 300, it is ventricular flutter. And if you don't identify the ventricular complex and it is showing you a chaotic electrical activity, we call ventricular fibrillation. And during ventricular fibrillation, invariably, the person will have almost absence of pulse, no blood perfusion. So person will have a giddiness, syncope, person will become unconscious, may even have a seizures, hardly any heart sounds, Heart sounds may not be heard, no pulse, blood pressure is not recordable, person is sinosed, etc. That will be very peculiar in case of a ventricular fibrillation. While in a ventricular arrest, it is almost a straight line with little electrical activity which can be seen in the form of a little force wave. So we call ventricular arrest or ventricular assistor or ventricular standstill. These are the three words commonly utilized. 
and ventricular fibrillation can be coarse or fine depending upon that whether you want to use those words or not ventricular tachycardia can be monomorphic polymorphic depending upon the shape of qrs complex if it is the same shape we call monomorphic if there are multiple shapes we call as a polymorphic polymorphic will be very common in a cholinergic catecholaminergic polymorphic vt and also in case of a torsada pointis it will be polymorphic in some of the other varieties also you do come across polymorphic ventricular tachycardias with vt if blood pressure is still maintained we call stable hemodynamic is maintained we call stable and if vt is there with almost there is a shock stage and pulse is not palpable blood pressure is not recordable we call unstable or we call hemodynamically unstable and torsada pointis is usually we come across a sinus bit suddenly becoming a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia or we call twisted ventricular tachycardia we call torsada pointis if i can identify any one of this characteristic we usually use the word idiopathic variety but if it is because of the previous damage we call as a scar and it is very commonly following a mi or maybe damage to the myocardium because of any xyz etiology or there is a structural heart disease or in a genetic because of the channelopathies or maybe because of drugs etc so these are all the different conditions which can end up with a different varieties of ventricular tachycardias we'll be talking mainly in a variety of what we call as ventricular premature bits if we get usually no we grade them as 1 0 if they are less than 30 in 1 hour means in 60 minutes we usually label that as grade 1 so number of ventricular premature bit single or multiple if you get single usually we label here if there are none it is grade 0 grade 1 will have a single or multiple but less than 30 in 1 hour so if you calculate in 1 minute 1 minute so it will be less than 1 you can roughly see this that in hour it is 30 so it becomes very difficult so sometimes when you take a lead you may not have any recording of a ventricular premature beat but if they are more than 30 now this will be very clearly identifiable because if your ecg is complete within 15 10 to 15 seconds you may not be able to record even in this but when it becomes further more now you will be able to record when they are of coming from a multiple focus and more than one in a minute usually we'll call that as a multiform is it clear and they are of different shapes if there are two consecutive bits we call couplets if there are three consecutive bit we call triplets and if there is r on t phenomena we call as a grade 5 this is one way of classifying it was long grading system in coronary artery disease no one is using this particular but if you want to use you can utilize this so these are usually unifocal or multifocal monomorphic or polymorphic uniform another word utilized is uniform or multiform couplets or triplets regular regularly irregular bigemini trigemini tetragemini pentagemini hexagemini etc these are the terminology so unifocal multifocal uniform multiform various shapes is it clear depending upon the focus depending upon the shapes etc depending upon the coupling intervals so unifocal these are identical shapes now if you look at this shape and this shape is different so this is multifocal this is unifocal here there are two bits multiple bits more than one here multiple bits but more coming from more than one focus multifocal i already explained you ventricular parasystole this is when all ventricular premature bit this is a fusion bit this is a fusion bit but these are coming from two different focus they are 
absolutely rr interval is constant so coupling interval is multiple of rr so this is called ventricular parasystole again you can see here there are two bits so multiple ventricular premature bit coming from different focus so multifocal so we call multiform multiple ventricular premature bits multiple bits but coming from single focus so it is unifocal multiple ventricular premature bits so number of bits and depending upon the focus single focus single bit unifo unifocal single bit two bits multiple bits coming from two different focus so multifocal multiple ventricular premature bit see here again same multiple multifocal ventricular premature bits different focus different focus different focus three bits multiple bits multifocal premature bit now depending upon the frequency and sequence single bit if two bits are coming in succession we will now show you this is a single bit and when it is more than single we call multiple but how sequence is being maintained you can see these two bits are identical and they have come in succession three bits that come in succession identical couplets triplets you can see more than three when it is more than three we use the word salvos it is triplets this is triplet this is salvos so whenever two couplets three triplets more than three salvos and if it is more than 30 seconds we call vt so two bits couplets salvos triplets clear salvos triplets and in between you can see here so this is non sustained these are all non sustained here you can see again salvos salvos and if this is more than 30 seconds you will call that as a vt or you can use the word non sustained monomorphic vt now if you look here normal sinus ventricular premature bit normal sinus ventricular premature bit alternate bit is ventricular premature bit and they are coming from a single focus so this is classical ventricular bigemini 1 2 third bit 1 2 third bit ventricular trigemini clear so this is bigemini this is trigemini bigemini trigemini and here you can see it is bigemini but couplets so this is bigemini and couplets this is trigemini but not couplets this is tri every third bit is ventricular premature bit this is every second bit is ventricular premature bit but coming in couplets ventricular couplets but like bigemini so bigemini trigemini couplets triplets every fourth bit quadrigemini or we use our tetragemini fourth bit ventricular premature bit or we call tetragemini now if you look here this rr interval constant and between these two r which is constant a ventricular beat is sandwich so this is called interpolated ventricular premature beat and there will be no compensatory pause this is a interpolated ventricular premature beat again you can see here normal rr interval here this is also normal rr interval but this is a ventricular premature beat this is r on t phenomena but it is interpolated between a normal cardiac cycle so this is interpolated ventricular premature beat interpolated very clear now if you see here this has come early and there is a full compensatory pause so this is not interpolated this is the rr interval this is premature now if you look at this t wave this is a t wave and this has come on t wave so this is called r on t phenomena 
and whenever it comes r on t phenomena means if the ventricular premature beat comes on a repolarization of a previous beat it can end up with suddenly ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation so this is one of the dangerous variety of ventricular premature beats and sometimes they can also produce a fusion beats they can end up with a fusion beats you can see this is r on t phenomena this is a t wave it has just come on that and if it comes further early this two will mix together and it will produce a fusion beat now you can see that this is r on t this has come on t and when it comes on t it can suddenly end up with a run of ventricular rhythm and the rate is faster than 100 will cause as a vt so r on t phenomena very frequently will end up with a ventricular tachycardia so if you see even a single bit of r on t phenomena do consider that and try to treat those particular patient again r on t ending with a ventricular tachycardia but this is non sustained again this is normal sinus rhythm while here if you see we don't have a ecg further so this is a sustained variety of a ventricular tachycardia we have discussed this idioventricular rhythm accelerated idioventricular rhythm this also we have discussed so i am skipping over again you can see the rate is faster than 40 but less than 100 so we call accelerated idioventricular rhythm i have shown you all this before and i have discussed this i have added one more here normal sinus rhythm r on t phenomena run of ventricular tachycardia quite frequently it can be monomorphic or polymorphic you can see this shape and look at this shape this shape is different here the shape is changing again the shape is changing this is a polymorphic vt so r on t phenomena can end up with a monomorphic ventricular tachycardia or polymorphic ventricular tachycardia and you look here r on t phenomena ended up with a ventricular tachycardia and now you can see this it is going into vf this can be very dangerous one and this can end up with a asystole and person can have a sudden cardiac death so do remember r on t phenomena is not a good sign so here again you can see here normal qrs t wave and almost r on t here it is on t only r on t there is a run of vt and that run of vt has ended up with now you can see that has been converted into vf and when it is converted into vf it is life threatening person can die so keep that thing in mind now you can see here this and normal sinus bit has fused together this is a ventricular complex ventricular premature bit has fused together so this is a fusion bit but if during this period the sinus bit comes and ventricle captures that bit we call capture bits so it will be a normal sinus bit between ventricular complexes this we call as a capture bit so fusion bit and capture bit is one of the condition which can help you to diagnose a ventricular tachycardia we have already talked about this in difference between svt with aberrancy and vt you can see this is a run of ventricular complexes it is tachycardia so ventricular tachycardia but after that there is a normal sinus rhythm so it is a non sustained you can even call this as a salvos run of ventricular tachycardia but it is even more than this trip we'll use the word sustained all qrs complex identical no p wave broad qrs complex t wave in opposite direction no compensatory pause and rate wise more than 100 per minute and all qrs complex are identical sustained ventricular tachycardia now if you look in this strip see this shape see this shape see this shape they are changing polymorphic rate wise tachycardia and whenever you see this this is called twisting so that is torsor de pointis so there is a tachycardia wide qrs complex multimorphological 
multiple shapes you can see the shapes are changing this shape is different this is different this is different this is different this is also different you can see this so that is we call as a multiple morphological variety or polymorphic variety changing rr interval this is irregularly irregular so changing axis is also getting twisted if you get all this criteria it is torsor the point is and very frequently it is an important to recognize this pattern as there are number of reversible causes heart blocks hypokalemia hypomagnesemia drugs like tricyclic antidepressant overdose and ischemic heart disease these conditions are reversible conditions so if you identify them and treat them early you will have a reversible ventricular tachycardia and you will have a good prognosis so ventricular tachycardia ending up with ventricular fibrillation you can see chaotic electrical activity you can't identify where is a qrs complex and what type of qrs complex it is so this is bizarre irregular random wave form and that is ventricular fibrillation you can see this chaotic ventricular tachycardia ending up with a ventricular fibrillation and if you can identify qrs complex and rate is more than 300 we use the word ventricular flutter so there is a bizarre sine wave like rhythm it is very fast but you can identify the wave so that will be this sooner or later will become vf but when it becomes a straight line there are few conditions there are lot of condition all causes which produces ventricular tachycardia can end up with ventricular arrest so extensive myocardial damage respiratory failure ischemia infarction traumatic cardiac arrest ventricular aneurysm counter shock hypoxia hypothermia hyperkalemia hypokalemia pre existing acidosis drug overdose etc all this can produce ventricular arrest you can see this straight line you can see only p wave but there is no ventricular complexes this we also use a word stroke at a meta but here straight for ventricular arrest stall or ventricular standstill or ventricular arrest these are the three words commonly utilized so do keep it in mind but remember one more thing if electrode has been displaced it is not in contact with the chest wall you can have a straight line always try to look at that particular thing if person is unconscious absence of pulse then definitely it will be favoring a sister clear cut a systole or stand still or arrest cardiac arrest or a systole or stand still or you can instead of cardiac you can use a ventricular stand still ventricular a systole or ventricular a systole so sinus rhythm ventricular tachycardia sooner or later will be ending up if not treated ventricular fibrillation and once there is a ventricular fibrillation very soon it will end up with a systole so sinus tachycardia can also suddenly instead of going into ventricular tachycardia can go into ventricular fibrillation but if you come across a sinus bits but there is no ventricular contraction no pulse no blood pressure and person is unconscious this is electrical no contraction mechanical dissociation and this we call is a pea pulseless electrical activity this is sinus bit sinus bit a big pause and then again sinus bit so this we call as an arrest or we call stand still but following a sinus bit so it is called sinus arrest or sinus pause but by and large this will be followed by a normal sinus bit and this is very rarely longer than few seconds so this is sinus arrest but if you get a sinus complex followed by a run of vf or suddenly there is a long straight line and which is for a very long period more than 30 second 40 seconds it will be what we call is a sinus arrest going into stand still or a systole whenever the pacemaker is there it will produce a pacemaker complex and if there is a ventricular pacing 
you can see here this is a broad qrs complex followed by a opposite direction t wave so this is a disc quadrant complexes qrs complex is negative t wave is upright and all qrs complex is preceded by a big spike this is a pacemaker spike so this is a pacemaker complexes this should not be mistaken as a ventricular tachycardia so keep that thing in mind if you see like this complexes but preceded by a spike we call as a pacemaker spike this is a ventricular pacing and whenever that particular ventricular pacing pacemaker does not work now you can see a pacemaker spike but there is no qrs complex at all and then there is no pacemaker spike at all recorded here and again there is one ventricular complex so this is pacemaker has failed either because of a break in the wire or because of the battery failure or because of the machine failure you will have to identify we use our pacemaker failure failure to do a output normal qrs normal qrs sinus bits p wave p wave but no qrs complex this is almost we call is a ventricular asystole but there is a p wave we call is a stoke adam attack and if there are no p wave it is a pure simple ventricular standstill or ventricular arrest or we call is a ventricular asystole now i end my lecture here these are all the different types of ventricular complexes you should be able to identify and i would like to repeat if any person who has got multifocal ventricular premature beat rnt phenomena multiple ventricular premature beats more than 8 to 10 in 1 minute not 30 in 1 hour more than 8 to 10 in 1 minute means if you multiply by 60 you can calculate the number of ventricular premature beats it will be extremely high so if you come across in 1 hour lot of multiple ventricular premature beat maybe unifocal maybe multifocal but multifocal ventricular premature beat are on t phenomena treat them as a life threatening ventricular arrhythmias and vt is 100% life threatening whether stable or unstable you treat them i end my lecture here we see you in next lecture hope this is helpful to you